Sometimes I think I'm in control I often act so foolishly Facing problems on my own I don't really know I don't really know what's best for me No, I don't My mistakes at times deserve All the plans for me you've made a glove in which you place your hand not my will but yours be done Lord I'm only human I don't really understand the best laid plans I've made my plans so often go astray help me lord lord keep me in your will please keep me in your will so i won't be in your way please help me jesus and put me Good afternoon again, St. John. It's a blessing to be before you again to share with you from the word of our God. I trust that you've been saved this week. You've been blessed. Let's continue to trust the Lord and do what he directs you to do. Today, I have a message for you from the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians verses 18 I'm sorry verses 10 through 18 
Let me begin with prayer. Almighty Heavenly Father, thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for your love and all that you provided us to have. Thank you for your word, Lord, and this opportunity to share it with your disciples. Bless it now and bless me. And may you use them and your word to your glory and your honor. I ask it in your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Beginning with that 10th verse of the 6th chapter of Ephesians, let me read in your hearing. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the seal of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The reading of God's word, thank you. I want to share with you these words as a thought and a subject. The Christian's provision for endurance. Christian provision for endurance. Now, Paul has a way of writing his epistles in two sections. He began by dealing with the doctrinal aspect, which is from chapters 1 through 3. And then chapters 4 through 6, he deals with the practical application. And that's what I want to share with us today the practical application of what we have received. There were some very interesting and qualified attributes as we look at our lives, as we are to live them out in the discipleship ministry and glory to God. One of the things he, he gives us as he begins this epistle he undergirds us with a foundation that is substantiating and sustaining. He gives, I want to go back to chapter one and lift out three things that he deals with us. It was my first uh, uh, objective to share with you is our relationship with God. If we're going to endure, we need a relationship with God. Paul sets this up before us as he begins that first chapter and he says in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us acceptable in the beloved. Following that he interjects three things that is really pertinent for us today. And verse says, 7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. 
Then he moves down further and says something that continues to to seal and isolate it. He said, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. We can praise God for that, that we have obtained an inheritance. And then he moves down to verse 13 and said, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Oh, glory, what a promise that we have been sealed. We don't have to worry about the devil taking from us what God has given us. We are secure. We can praise him for it today. If we are going to the provisions that made for Christian endurance is our relationship with God. Without that, everything else is null and void. But if we have a relationship with God, we're secure. How I feel about it is, my relationship with God is all I want. I'm satisfied with that because I have the promises that he's made unto me. When, when, when I was studying this and I was sharing, I said, now, why do we need all of these other resources? If I'm saved and born again and sanctified, the devil can't do me any harm. He can't damn my soul. But I believe what God through Christ wants us to do is, is our discipleship that he wants to use us in the world as salt and light. And so he's providing for us um, some provisions that we can live by each day. That we can, that will give us the in, insurance that we can endure regardless of what Satan tries to attack us with. Our relationship with God. That's what we need first of all. It is our foundation. It is what we stand on. And I want you to grasp that today and realize it in your being that if you've confessed your sin and given your life to God through Jesus Christ and his blood has washed you and sanctified you, you are saved and secure. But not only that, if we're going to walk through this life and live in this world and be his disciples and share his grace and mercy with others and his glory, we need resources to enable us to live that life. Our relationship is with God, but our resources are through Jesus Christ. He gives us the power and resources that we can stand against Satan's ravages. And that word it says to us, as we, we are not fighting flesh and blood. I think our grave mistake is that we think it's our neighbor. We think it's in our family. We think it's in our church family. We think it's in our community. We think it's in politics. We think it's in the sins and things of the world that we are fighting. And we are often fighting against one another. But that's not our enemy. That's not who we need to fight. It is Satan. And I think too often we feel that Satan is just an imagination of our mind. But he's real. He's a spirit world. And listen to what the word says about him. We wrestle, and listen, we are wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principality. He is ruling all of these operations in our society and government and things against 
powers against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can you just imagine that? Think of it. Look how we've led some people. We've worshipped things and materials. You even have people now in demon worship. We believe our resources is in a little bottle of water. Our resources is in some prayer cloth or a handkerchief that we have. Oh no, our resources is in Jesus Christ. It's his blood that supplies all that we need. His, our resources from him. Listen to what we get and what he's saying we need to put on. And I like what he says here. Wherefore, take unto you the whole, whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't say anything about fighting. Just stand. And you're going to need some strong resources to stand. Don't have to attack, but just stand. And the resources will help you to stand. Stand therefore. Having your loins girded, have on a belt. In that day, in the military, like that, they, they, they wore a, what, not a belt like we have, but a huge belt that, because they wore long garments that would hang over on the outside, and they would get tangled up in them when they were chasing the enemy or running from the enemy. So what they would do when they were going to fight, they would gather that up tuck it down in that belt so that they could be free to move about and around. And we need that. We need the belt. Look at it. Get it about with the belt of truth. Not hearsayers and lies, but the belt of truth. Truth comes through Jesus. He is the truth. If I go back to John and tell you, he, he would even say it. I am the truth of God. I've come to save and deliver you. Not only the belt of truth, get it above, but having on the breastplate of righteousness. Where do we get that righteousness? It, through Jesus Christ. We don't have any righteousness of our own. But he came and blotted out all of our sins and now he's made us right with God. And God has counted unto us righteousness because we believe in Jesus Christ. And we have on the blessed prayer. Covers our heart where we are. It's righteousness. Then our feet shod with the preparation of Gospel of peace. That means we are to carry the love of Christ, his word, salvation. The Roman soldiers in that day, they would have like spikes in the bottom of their sandals with it so that they could grip and not stumble and fall. We need a, a gripping power upon the Holy Spirit in our lives and of the gospel that what we share. That means we, we need to have a solid grip in that we could hold it as we share the word in the gospel. We believe it first of all before we share it with someone else. And our feet need to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace now. The gospel of entanglement, the gospel of fear, but the gospel of peace. And then above all, taking the seal of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts 
of the wicked. That seal was not just some two by four seal that you held in front of you. It was a huge seal that went from the head of the soldier down to his feet. And he would stand behind that and walk with that because the enemy had come up with a tactic of shooting fiery arrows. And if they would hit the soldier's garment or anything, it would set it on fire. So that seal of faith was designed so that when the arrow would shoot into it, it would snuff out the flame. We are living in a world where Satan is shooting fiery dots at us today. Things people say. Things they accuse us of. Attitudes sometimes we're faced with. But if you have the seal of faith, you can quench all of that. You won't worry about whether someone like you or want to sit beside you or talk ugly about you, tell lies on you. You have the seal of faith. You can quench all of that. And you can stand firm because you've been delivered through the power and the glory of God. Jesus gives us all of these resources that we are able to endure against the attack of Satan and his army that's trying to destroy us. What Satan is trying to do, he's not out in the world fighting against sinners. They're already part of his life and kingdom. But he's out against the Christians and the disciples of the church because he does not want us to carry the word. One of the other things is, he realized that he cannot damn your soul to hell once you've been saved. That's not what he's after. He's after to destroy your testimony. He does not want you to live so that people can see Christ living in you and will help others to believe in him and come to him. He wants to destroy your witness for him. Want to destroy your confidence and testimony as you walk and live every day. You are the disciples of the earth. We are. And Satan is trying to destroy that, tear us down, and make us doubt and be fearful and worry and wonder. Don't fear, saints. God is still on the throne. He still loves us. He's still going to take care of us. He made a promise, and we have been sealed. And nobody can break that seal. And we praise him today for it. Jesus Christ is our, gives us our resources. But I said we are, these are provision for our endurance. With all of this, we still need something. Our resistance comes by the aid of the Holy Spirit. He gives us infusion to stand. He gives us the fortitude, the stamina that we can be able to endure. It's not easy. I'm not going to say it to you. It's easy to do it. Not at all. It's going to take some dedication. It's going to take some midnight prayers. And we can depend on the Holy Spirit. God sent him back into the world because he knew that we needed someone to assist us and to help us to endure this life. When Jesus went back to glory, the second chapter of Acts, in the first chapter, he told him, so you stay here now. Don't you try to minister and do anything till you be endured with power from on high. In a few days he will come. And on the day of Pentecost, when they were all in the upper room, in one accord, he came as a rushing mighty wind. 
cloven tongues of fire and rested upon them. The Holy Spirit gives us that fortitude, that stamina. And they were able to go out and to preach all over that community. And 3,000 souls were saved that one day. He wants to use us today to do the same thing. What is it that the Holy Spirit uses to give us that stamina to resist the ravages of Satan? Well, I believe it's faith. Faith in God that he saved you and he delivered you. But not only faith, I believe it's hope. I'm not just living for today. I have hope of a brighter day. Even what we are going through now. Church family, I want to tell you, keep hope up. Keep hope alive, Jesse Jackson said. Yes. You need hope. Hope will help you to resist. Hope helps you to help you to hold on. You hope that it's going to be better. Hope that you're going to get through. Hope that you're going to have the victory. But above all, do it in love. These three qualities and attributes, faith, hope, and love. And Paul said the greatest of these is love. Love helps to solve so many problems. We need some love today. We need love even not only for our family and loved ones. We need love even for our enemies. Love for those who are trying to destroy us. Can you imagine what, how God felt when we were worshiping the idols and turned away from him? But his love for us was so great that he sent his son Jesus into the world to die on a rugged cross to save us all because of his love. What a great love that he has for us. And we ought to love others like he has loved us. I praise him today. I love, I've said in this passage on several other occasions, but today it just resonates so spiritually alive in my heart as I live this life and walk through this each day of life. I have faith, oh yeah, that I've been redeemed. I have hope of a future kingdom. And I'm going to live in love, joy with one another, and share it. But listen to how Paul wraps up in this conclusion, in this message. In verse 18, he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're not going to make it without prayer. Learn how to pray you. You don't have to have a multitude of words. I always believe in being specific with God. Tell God how you're hurt. Tell God what you need. Tell God how you want to serve him. Tell God what you're going through. He's there. He will help you. Nothing else can help you. Money can't do it. Your health can't do it. Position can't do it. But oh, if you pray to God, he'll hear and answer prayer. He'll never turn away. It may not come when you want it. My grandmother said, you'll always be on time. Praise God for that, that you'll come on time. And, and, and your relationship with him 
your resources through Jesus Christ. And your resistance through the Holy Spirit will help you to hold on. And when you pray, there will come a joy in your life that you can give glory and praise to the Lord. I thank him today because he has redeemed me. I feel his joy and I glory in his presence and his name. Well, oh, I wish I had the congregation with me today that I could praise him like I want to praise him. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Tell me what else he's done for you. If he brought you out, you ought to praise him. If he took you out of the muck and the mire of clay, you ought to give him some glory. For he is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Well, thank you, church. May the Lord bless your heart. May God keep you today. May he keep you through this week. May this message help you to endure this week. And not only this week, until all of this condition have been removed. But be assured, God is still alive and still on the throne. Praise his name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you glory and honor and praise. For you are worthy to be praised. My faith is rooted in you. My hope is in you. And my love is through you. Blessed now, I pray in Jesus' name. Before I give the benediction, again, I would like to extend the opportunity for someone that may hear this message and their heart are pricked and they come to the realization that they need Jesus if they're going to endure they need a relationship with God. He has provided that through his son, Jesus Christ. He sent men to the world to die for our sins. And if you believe that and trust him today, you can just say in your heart, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life and my heart. I want you to redeem me and save me. I give my life to you. Here am I. I need you, Lord. I confess. I accept your redemption. If that's you today, would you do it? Just bow your head wherever you are. Ask the Lord to come into your life through Jesus Christ, his son. And you are saved. You will have a relationship with God. You will be able to endure whatever is going on around you. There may be someone who's listening with what we call the backslidden have driven away and walked away from God and felt that because things didn't work as you had planned them and programmed them that God had forgotten you and that left you all alone. He has not. He's still there to reconcile you back. He still loves you. He loves all of humanity. He even loves the sinner. And I know he loves sinners. You might ask me how, because I was one once. And he loved me and redeemed me. He loved you. He'll bring you back and make you a part of his kingdom and give you discipleship again. If that's you, just make that confession and ask the Lord to forgive you and give back your life to him. He will do it. May God bless you. Thank you so much. We praise him. Oh, what would we be, what would we do if we didn't have God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit today? Thank God that he is there. His son is there. His Holy Spirit is there to assist us. May God bless you, as I share with you the benediction now. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, 
be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever. Amen.